टुडे इन अकाउंट्स वी विल स्टार्ट लेसन नंबर थ्री कंपनीज फाइनल अकाउंट सो फ्रॉम दिस सम सॉरी फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर यू आर हैविंग ओनली वन सम विच इज इलेवन मार्क्स देर इज नो थियोरी फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर ओके सो एज देर इज नो थियोरी नो नीड टू डिस्कस दिस ऑल डायरेक्टली कम टू पेज नंबर दैट इज वन थर्टी वन टेक आउट पेज नंबर वन थर्टी वन सी देर यू विल सी that is the statement of pnl for the year ending see in final account what is coming you have to prepare the pnl account you have studied already final account of partnership okay in that you were preparing trading account pnl account pnl appro partners capital and then balance sheet see this is the final account not of partnership but this is the final account of a company and here you have to prepare two things one is statement of profit and loss and one is balance sheet clear now see what is there in statement of profit and loss okay see the format first revenue from operation that is known as sales okay note number here the amount column will be divided into two parts like this then see here there will be note number for each item there is note number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then there is 8 and 9 on the next page okay so in pnl account there are nine points which you have to consider okay see the first point that is revenue from operation it means it is sales so when sales is given you have to write down the amount of sales in the first column see i have made the parts two parts okay so in first column you will write down the amount for revenue from operation that is sales other incomes okay what do you mean by other incomes so other incomes any kind of income for example rent received commission received bonus received okay interest received so that all other incomes will be recorded again here in the first column clear now first and second the total is coming that is third okay so in third column what will be there there will be only total revenue that is the total of first and second clear so total revenue where you will put see your first two items are in first column so the total of this two will go into the next column that is second column here is this clear see now this two amount columns okay they are not debit and credit nothing like that okay see in uh, final account of partnership see in final account of partnership which you have learned in part 1 okay this you have learned in part 1 okay that is partnership see there what you were doing that was a horizontal form of this was horizontal form of partner uh, final account okay why horizontal because you were preparing like this that is this is your debit side and this is your credit side trading account pnl account pnl appro partners capital and then in balance sheet how was your balance sheet so it was like this that this side is your liability and this side is your asset it means this is your credit side and this is your debit side okay this format of preparing final account is a horizontal form of final account clear and when you are preparing the final account for company it is always in a vertical form please remember this okay vertical form means it is in the standing form so see this is your credit side revenue from operation and other incomes this is your credit side okay so here you are not supposed to write down that this is credit and this is debit no credit and debit will come all together in a line only see first two items are your credit side then expenses you are writing so expenses where you were recording pnl account debit side so see this is this is all your debit items clear so first i two items are credit and then next items from phone number it is starting that is debit side it is starting so here you have to write down everything in this amount column only so here there is no bifurcation of debit and credit it will go all in one line clear so see as they are in a vertical form in vertical form the sides are not like right side and left hand side it will be coming all in a straight line so first two items we have cleared that is revenue from operation and other incomes okay please set in your mind that the first two items will be this two okay then the total revenue so total revenue the total of this two will come here see turn the page okay again they have shown everything in detail see revenue from operation that is known as sales if there is any sales return then you have to deduct it from the sales and then you will write down the amount in the first column see here also make two parts so here you will put in amount in the first column then other incomes so see interest and dividend received bad debt recovered profit on sale of asset these are all your incomes so this all you will record again here okay then the total of this five what you will do so you will put here that is total revenue okay then moving further see 
after this total revenue okay fourth item okay see now number 1 and 2 is only for 1 and 2 see here for third there is no note number if you see then for expenses also there is no note number now note number start that is your purchase that is note number 3 okay so now purchase is there then change in stock see what do you mean by change in stock so opening stock minus closing stock that is your change in stock okay what is your change in stock so opening stock minus closing stock see again turn the page purchases are there okay so if any purchase return are there what you have to do so total purchase minus purchase return that you have to consider see what is change in stock so opening stock minus closing stock okay the things are clear now see direct expenses now see remember which expenses are direct expenses the expenses which you are recording in trading account okay expenses to be recorded in trading account so in part 1 you have studied the final account of partnership all the expenses so see all the expenses which we were recording in trading account are to be recorded in the under the title of direct expenses see if you can see turn back side direct expenses wages carriage in word freight okay more if you want to write octro is there clear so there are many expenses which you were recording on in trading account so the expenses which are to be recorded in trading account are to be recorded under the heading of direct expenses clear then further see employees benefit expense see what is employees benefit expense so salary is there commission is there bonus is there which is to be given to the workers or employees okay that will come here see your back side salary bonus commission see contribution to provident fund this is also one of the item which is coming under the heading of employees benefit expense because this is contribution for provident fund provident fund is always given to the employees okay and contribution so the company is giving this okay so this also is to be given to the employees so this will also come under the heading of see pro, only provident fund will never come here only provident fund is your liability okay but contribution to provident fund is one type of an expense for the company because see what is provident fund if for example an amount is to be deducted from the employee's salary for example i am working as a teacher in a school okay from my salary suppose if 1000 rupees is deducted so the school will also input the 1000 rupees in my provident fund that is known as contribution to provident fund so for example the employees those who are working under any company okay from their salary if 1000 rupees is deducted then the company is also supposed to add 1000 rupees from their pocket so this is known as contribution to provident fund so only provident fund is liability whereas contribution to provident fund is an expense for the company which is related to employees that's why it is coming under the heading of employees benefit expense okay so there there will be salary bonus commission and contribution to provident fund next is c after this there is finance cost okay now finance cost remember in finance cost there will be only interest okay finance cost means interest see why finance cost is in in your interest see finance means the amount which you are needing in the business okay now what is known as cost okay so for example you are taking loan from somewhere so what expenses you are bearing for that loan you are paying interest on that loan okay so finance cost is nothing but that is the money which you have taken from outside source okay and for that the amount which you are paying to them that is you are paying the interest so all type of interest will be com coming under the heading of finance cost see turn back side interest on bond or debenture interest on loan or public deposit interest on bank overdraft interest on short term loan so see all are different type of interest which you have you are paying for this sources of finance okay this finance this money which you have taken from outside okay as a loan or bond or debenture so for that you are paying the amount to the party that is known as interest and this is known as finance cost expenses clear next is c after this there is depreciation and amortization see depreciation you all know what is depreciation now what do you mean by amortization see amortization is nothing but write off w r i t e o f f right 
of okay see in final account you have studied lease old building so there is right of on that lease old building okay so that right of you have to record or on patents some right of are there right of 25% of patents okay such kind of adjustments were there or right of 3/4 of the part of patent uh, patent okay so that right of is known as amortization okay so see here it is depreciation on fixed asset goodwill patent trademark are intangible asset and on intangible asset what is there there is some write off okay so in amortization you have simply you have to remember that all type of rights off are to be recorded under this heading that is disbenture discount write off advertisement expense campaign expense these are fictitious asset write off research and development expenses are to be write off so all type of write offs will be recorded under this heading then other expenses now see what you will remember in other expenses all expenses which are to be recorded okay are recorded in pnl account see in final account okay partnership you have studied so what you will remember the expenses which you were recording in pnl account are to be recorded under the heading of other expenses and here the expenses which are to be recorded in trading account goes to direct expense so if the expenses are recorded in trading account that will go under the heading of direct expense and the expenses which are recorded in pnl account will go to that is other expenses okay now what you will do you will do the total of all these expenses see how many type of expenses are there one 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 this seven expenses okay so here the amounts you have written like this now the total expenses will come here in the outer column okay so all these expenses see you will record here 3 4 5 6 7 in the inner column now the total of this from 3 to 9 the amount will come in the outer column like this fine so see now now here you got total expenses now what you have to do next item is fifth item that is profit before tax so see what you will do you have to deduct that is this total revenue this amount okay for example this is 1 lakh okay and here the total expenses this amount is your 80000 okay so 1 lakh minus 80000 what is left out that is 20000 that will come here in the amount that is profit before tax okay fifth number that will be that is 20000 so you will record it here okay now see suppose i am writing here that i am getting here that is 20000 and now next is what provision for tax okay provision for tax suppose they have told you that it is 10% so what is the 10% of 20000 it is 2000 so here i will write down 2000 so 20000 minus 2000 what i will get i will get 18000 okay that is my profit after tax that is 5 minus 6 okay so this is your format how to prepare that is statement of pnl account see now how you will remember see two items are easy first is sales revenue from operation and second is other income now this how to remember in a sequence so see here write down the keyword that is p c d then e f d okay because you are again that depreciation okay and then there is o okay so p c d e f d o c p purchase change in stock direct expenses employees benefit expenses then f finance cost then depreciation and amortization and other expenses so you have to remember this word that is p c d e f d o okay so it will be coming in a sequence okay and then total expenses will be there after total expenses what you will do you will write down that is profit before tax okay so total income minus total expenses so you will get profit before tax then provision for taxation whatever percentage they have given that and then deduct this so you will get that is profit after tax okay so this is your statement of pnl account okay now after this what is prepared so after this you will prepare that is your statement uh, statement of balance sheet okay so that we will see afterwards so this side it was remaining that in other expenses i explained that only what is coming that is the items which you are recording in pnl account so see postage and stationery rent audit fees office and administrative expense sales expenses bed debt write off see bed debt write off will come here okay it will not come here okay keep that thing in mind okay so bad debt write off will be coming under the heading of that is any type of bad debt will be coming under the heading of other expenses clear 
and the important thing see please do not do this up and down okay you have to uh, follow the note numbers okay so please remember that is p c d c e f is coming continuously then again d and then o okay so this sequence should not be changed see as this sums are easy in board exam only you have to prepare the format the items are given only you have to input the things in board exams the checkers are very strictly seeing this because this sum is e this sum will be easy and it is carrying highest marks that is 11 marks okay so the paper checkers that is the examiners want exactly the same format if your sum is right but the items are up and down then the marks will be deducted you won't get full marks in board exam okay so please kindly follow the step uh, that is sequence okay do not do anything up and down you have to follow this sequence that is p c d e f d n o second thing now okay after doing this sum what you will prepare next that is your statement of balance sheet now in balance sheet there are two items that will go from year to balance sheet okay one is this profit after tax okay and one is provision for tax that is point number 6 and point number 7 these two items will be having two entries one is it is, will come here provision that is 2000 and one is profit after tax that is 18000 this two amounts again it will go in balance sheet okay that i'll show that is c after this you have to prepare balance sheet and come here that is your balance sheet is given to you on page number that is 126 okay this is your format of balance sheet okay so now we will do the format of balance sheet okay first i'll show you where these two items will go okay that is c your profit after tax your profit after tax will go to point number 1 that is b reserves and surplus okay so here there will be entry for profit after tax okay so here there will be entry of that 18000 that is profit after tax is to be recorded under the heading of reserves and surplus what is it i'll show everything to you i'll discuss that thing to you later on okay now the second item was that is provision after tax okay see profit after tax 18000 will be recorded here under the heading of reserves and surplus second item is that is this provision for tax which was 2000 which we got okay provision for tax so that will come here see short term provisions okay here there will be entry for provision for tax that is point number 3 in that d short term provisions okay so you have to remember that whenever you are preparing statement of pnl okay after preparing this okay this two last items that is point number 6 and 7 will be again recorded in balance sheet okay that will be recorded here that is one will be coming in point number 1 b reserves and surplus and one will come that is point number 3 d that is short term provisions provision for tax this you have to keep in mind okay now i am starting the discussion of that is balance sheet okay how you will prepare the balance sheet in company's final account okay so in company's final account see again i am repeating in partnership final account you have to prepare five items that is trading pnl pnl appro partners capital and balance sheet whereas in company's final account you have to prepare two only that is one is statement of pnl and one is state uh, that is balance sheet clear second important point in partners final account there was the format you were preparing it was in an horizontal form okay so one was on debit side and one was on credit side that is left side and right hand side whereas in company's final account it has been prepared in a vertical form see vertical form you have seen that in pnl also first revenue from operation that was your credit side and then debit side is coming that is expenses same way here also see first again particulars note number is there fine again here you have to make the part okay that is your first part and that is your second part okay see now equity and liability see liability this is your credit side okay so first you, again here also balance sheet will also start with credit side okay first part equity and liability in this there are three parts first second and third first is shareholder fund okay shareholder fund means share capital this you have to remember so here you will write down your share capital whether is it is equity share capital or preference share capital whatever you will record here second is reserves and surplus see surplus means profit okay so that's why profit after tax is to be recorded here okay so any kind of reserve for example general reserve 
reserve fund okay that will be recorded here surplus means profit so any type of profit if it is there you will record here suppose now in statement of pnl you are not getting profit but you are getting loss so that also will be recorded here only but what you will do you will keep the amount in the bracket okay that you will have you will study okay so if there is any kind of loss you will keep the amount in the bracket if there is profit then you will keep directly like that okay but in most probably in all these sums you will get profit only you won't get loss okay this is just i'm showing that if loss is coming then also it will be recorded here only reserves in surplus but you will keep the amount in the bracket fine next is non current liability see what do you mean by non current that is for long term okay non current means long term so non current liability how many liabilities are there three types see long term borrowings other long term liabilities and long term provisions what is coming inside that i'll discuss later first you remember this three main titles that is long term borrowing other long term liabilities and long term provision then the turn comes for current liabilities what is there see non current is for long term then current is for short term okay so here there will be all short term liabilities so short term borrowings trade payables other current liabilities and short term provisions fine so these will be coming under the heading of current liabilities now how you will remember see first is shareholder fund here there is sr then non current liability so here there is lol okay and here current liability so stos see stop stop but it is not stop but it is stos s t o s that is short term borrowing trade payables other current liabilities and short term provisions okay what is coming in that that we are discussing now see here now see this is your first point that is share capital okay here you only remember that is equity share capital and preference see all these items are not coming more okay only remember that share capital any type of share capital that is either it is equity share capital or preference share capital will be recorded here okay this is the important point that is less c if you can see in the point number second less call in arrears if there is any call in arrears you have to deduct that call in arrears from the share capital this point you have to keep in mind okay so if there is any less uh, call in arrears what do you mean by call in arrears that you have studied in lesson number 1 if any of the party is not paying the amount okay we give the entry for call in arrears suppose you are supposed to issue 1 lakh shares in the market out of that 1 lakh one party holding 1000 shares is not paying so that amount whatever is coming that you will deduct from this that is known as call in arrears okay then coming to next point that is reserves and surplus okay now in reserves and surplus also see the first item surplus as per statement of pnl which i told you okay that is here i explained that here you have to record profit after tax in reserves and surplus okay so your reserve and surplus will first start from the pnl account statement okay that 18000 if you remember okay the amount which we get in the statement of pnl last that is profit after tax okay so this is nothing but this surplus is profit after tax which we got then see any kind of reserve that is general reserve capital reserve okay debenture redemption reserve dividend equalization fund reserve fund workers accident compensation fund investment and see loss also which i explain loss will be recorded in the amount will be recorded in the bracket see if you can see the tick mark is in the bracket it means when you'll add it up you will add all this amount but when the time of loss is coming you will deduct this amount from that okay so loss if it is there then you have to write down the amount in the bracket okay now moving on to long term borrowing see what do you mean by long term borrowings debentures are there long term loans are there suppose they have mentioned loan but it is for more than 5 years so you will record here bond and public deposit so remember debenture long term loan bond and public deposit will come under the heading of long term borrowings then there is other long term liabilities what is there in other long term liabilities so see premiums are there remember this when there is premium on any debenture or preference share redemption means when you are repaying okay what do you mean by redemption that is repay so when you are giving back in lesson number 2 already you have studied when you are taking loan you write down that is issue of debenture that is if it is debentures when you are paying this back money of debenture to the share debenture holders then it is known as redemption of debenture 
and the sums also you have done that is premium on the redemption of debentures so this will be treated as other long term liabilities so in other long term liabilities what you will remember that is premium on debenture or preference share during the time of redemption then long term provisions what is there see this is your lol okay long term provisions what will be there provident fund gratuity fund pension fund workers profit sharing fund workers saving account this will all come under the heading of long term provision see in this chapter you have to remember that what is coming under the heading of what okay that is only main then short term borrowings any loan which is less than 1 year okay that will be coming under the heading of short term borrowings bank overdraft cash credit okay so this all will come under the heading of short term borrowing now see this was your lol so from here it is starting stos okay first is short term borrowing next is trade payables see what is trade payables so creditors and bills payable okay then other current liabilities outstanding expenses income received in advance unclaimed dividend debenture and premium on redemption payable during next year see again premium on redemption okay that is debenture see here this is premium on only redemption but if it is mentioned during next year which is going to come now okay during the next year now it will come so that will be recorded here call in advance is there any outstanding interest on debenture any okay so all this will be coming under the heading of other current liability then short term provision see here it is long term provision lol l is last long term provision here stos that is last is short term provision here there is only two one is provision for tax and one is proposed dividend see again this pro provision for tax which we have calculated in statement of pnl you got that is 10% it was 2000 rupees okay so that 2000 rupees will be recorded here that is short term provisions okay and in short term provision there are only two pro one is provision for tax and one is proposed dividend only two items are coming see here your liability side is over so now see here there is a line okay so this will be the total of your liability side okay now see asset side will not come on the other page okay as soon as you are getting over from the same page from the same next line what you have to start you have to start your assets okay see this is known as vertical form one after the other okay so you have to start your asset just next to it okay so same way see here here the page gets over so they have written on the next page but suppose in your exam okay here your liability is getting over so here only you will put number 2 that is your assets okay see in number 1 there is equity and liability so number 2 is your asset from the same page just to next to that line where you have kept one line empty for the total okay so here there will be total see one line after writing short term provision there will be line for total okay that is the total of your liability side now the next will be number 2 that is your non current assets and current assets okay in assets fine so first is non current assets second is current assets so what you will remember in equity and liability there are three main parts and in assets there are two main parts again non current assets now see non current assets okay what is there in non current assets first is fixed assets in fixed asset what is there tangible asset and intangible asset see what do you mean by tangible asset and intangible asset okay land and building machinery that will all which you can see that is tangible asset intangible asset which you cannot see that is goodwill patent copyright all they are intangible asset next again non current asset the sorry non current investment the investment which are for more than one year okay for example you have purchased any shares but it is for five year or two year or three years so that is non current investment see again here there is current investment down in number 2a okay see current investment which is only for the less than a year okay for months so when you are doing any kind of investment for months it will come under the heading of current investment when you are doing the investment for more than a year then it is known as non current investment clear next is long term loans and advances again any kind of loan or advances you are giving okay that will be coming for a long term so it will be coming under the heading of non current asset then it is other non current asset okay so here what you will remember f n l o f n l o fixed asset non current investment long term loan and advances other non current asset 
Now moving on to second point that is current asset. What you will remember here see CITCSO. Okay, CITCSO. So first is current investment. Second is inventories. See inventories means stock. Any kind of stock is known as inventories. Okay, what do you mean by inventories? That is stock. Trade receivable. See here there was trade payables. Creditors and bills payable. So in trade receivable what will be there? Datas and bills receivable. There was bills payable. So here there is bills receivable. Then cash and cash equivalent. Cash on hand and all that. Short term loan and advances and other current asset. Now in detail we will see what is inside this. Okay. See come to page number that is 129. See fixed asset, tangible, so land and building, plant and machinery, furniture and fixtures, vehicles, tool and equipment, leasehold, asset. All these are known as tangible assets. Then intangible, goodwill, patent, trademark, copyright. See three more are there. Normally this four always we are seeing. Three more are there that is license, software and franchise. So now remember that license, software and franchise will also come under the heading of intangible asset. Clear? Then, next, non-current investment. See, provident fund investment, debenture redemption fund investment, share of subsidiary company, shared and debentures of other companies. See, here, as it is non-current, it will be more than 12 months. Okay, fixed deposit with bank, government security unit of a mutual fund. So, which is more than 12 months will be coming under the heading of non-current investment. Then long term loan and advances. So see loan to any employee which is given for more than 12 months. See this will be treated as loan. Now what do you mean by advances? See these three are advances. That is custom deposit, telephone deposit, electricity deposit. Okay, Custom deposit when you are transporting any goods from one place to another. You deposit some of the amount that is known as custom deposit. When you are getting co uh, connection of telephone line, you have to deposit some certain amount to the telephone company. Okay, And when you will withdraw that line, it means when you are stopping the uh, getting the service, when you want to stop getting the service of telephone, okay, you tell them that now we don't want any telephone service, so they disconnect the line. So during that time, that deposit they give you back. Same way electricity deposit. When you are taking electricity for the first time, okay, you have to pay certain amount to deposit as a deposit when you are just uh, don't want that electricity supply in that particular place if you are not living there okay so you just disconnect the electricity supply so that deposit which you have given will be given back to you by the company okay electricity company so these three are known as advances clear so remember see now deposit word remember public deposit it is one type of a long term borrowing okay see public deposit okay here in point number three lol first l long term borrowing that is public deposit and these three deposits are custom deposit telephone deposit electricity deposit which will come on asset side that is under the heading of long term loan and advances next is other non-current asset okay debenture discount see to be return of after next year here there is word after Okay, advertisement, campaign, expenditure, research and development, expenditure. When there is after next month, it will come here. Clear? Then current investment. See, current means it is for the less than 12 months. Okay, so any share or debentures, marketable security, government security, unit of mutual fund. See, all these are coming here also. Non-current investment. But it is more than 12 year. And if it is less than 12 year, it will come under the heading of current investment. Next is inventories. See, inventories I told it is stock. Any kind of stock. Stock of raw materials, stock of semi-finished goods, stock of finished goods, stock in trade, which you are going to supply to some person. It means loose tools, spare parts. Okay, loose tool means screwdriver, hammer, nails, all they are loose tools. Consumable stores, okay, which you are going to consume that all stock in short, consumable stores. Goods in transit, okay. So all these are coming under the heading of inventories. Goods in transit means it is either on the ha, on the highway, okay, any of the truck or any of the loading which is transporting goods from one place to another place. So right now goods in transit means it is not either from with the seller or purchaser. It is some way on the road or in airways or waterways. So that all goods are known as goods in transit. Fine. Next is trade receivable. So here there will be data and bills receivable. 
then cash and cash equivalent so cash on hand bank balance see checks draft on hand all are treated as cash on hand then short term loan and advances so any loan which you have given for less than 12 months or any advances which you are given giving to suppliers so that is also coming here which is less than for 12 months then other current assets prepaid expenses income due but not uh, received okay see just remember outstanding expenses outstanding income outstanding uh, sorry pre received and prepaid will be always you are recording that is on uh, balance sheet in balance sheet either on asset side or liability so here this is your prepaid expenses and this is your outstanding income okay and same way here in liability see outstanding expenses and income received in advance so this is your outstanding expense and income received in advance that is your pre received income okay so this will be coming your liability side and this will be coming your that is on asset side okay see if you remember balance sheet okay on liability side what you were doing here you were recording outstanding expenses then what you were doing so outstanding income goes here okay then income comes here and expenses goes here so now what is this this is your pre received income and this is your prepaid expense so see this two is on asset side so see here it is there prepaid expense and outstanding income this two are on liability side which will be coming here that is see outstanding expense and pre received income clear then advertisement campaign debenture discount research see this three items are here also in point number 20 and it is here also in point number 14 but see what is here here it is after next 12 months words are there and here it is during okay during next 12 months so you have to remember like that that whenever during word is there it will come in point number 20 whenever after word is there it will be coming under point number 14 okay please keep this in mind and then again you will do the total okay so here there will be again total okay and this total should be tallied with this total that is for your lib asset side liability side okay so this two totals see in short come on page number 126 see point number 20 uh, sorry page number 126 the total here this total of liability side should be matched up with this total which is of the second number that is asset so when this two totals are same we consider that the balance sheet is tallied okay so see this is the theory, uh, theoretical portion which you have to remember so this format you have to learn by heart okay if you are well known with this format then only the items are to be input okay so this is your theoretical portion now we will be starting with the practical sums in exercise now take out page number 149 okay question number 3 okay see mcq and your question number 2 as there is no theory from this chapter only one sum that will be carrying for 11 mark that sum only is going to be asked okay now we will see first question number 3 see again this sum is not going to be asked in board exam okay for you there will be a sum in which you have to prepare the form uh, that is the balance sheet and a uh, statement of pnl account okay this we are doing only for practice is this clear this type of sums won't be asked in board exam this is only for your practice okay so for question number 3 come to page number that is 292 but first we'll read the question that is how will you show following balances in the balance sheet of a company as per schedule 3 of companies act 2013 again see this is important okay you are preparing vertical format of balance sheet which is mentioned in companies act in which schedule so it is mentioned in schedule 3 okay that is given in your textbook also that is see here it is mentioned on page number 117 okay part 1 of your schedule 3 to companies at 2013 okay so this companies at uh, this companies final account which you are preparing okay in a vertical form it is mentioned in companies act in part 1 of schedule 3 okay so this you have to remember okay come back to the question number 3 So see, all these items are given to you. Okay, you have to just mention that creditors, where creditors are to be recorded. So see, creditors are to be recorded first in trade payables. Where trade payables are coming, so that all you have to write down in this. Okay, so for that, take out page number that is two ninety two. Okay, like this. See, particulars is there. One by one items are written. Okay, head of balance sheet. Okay, first where it is coming in balance sheet. then which is the main head and then which is the sub head okay 
so see first is creditors okay we'll start from here either you start from here or from here see trade creditors are coming under the heading of trade payables where trade payables are coming so under the heading of current liability where current liability is there so under the heading of equity and liability is this clear to everyone okay then security premium see again security premium if you want to go from the earth security premium is coming in liabilities so equity and liability then security premium is coming in shareholders fund okay so shareholder fund then it is coming under the heading of reserves and surplus okay so it will be under the heading of reserves and surplus clear see the format which i have told you to learn okay that is given on page number <coughs> that is see this which is on page number 126 okay so like this from this you have to understand that which item will go under the heading of what okay page number 126 the items are shown okay so when you learn this format easily you will be able to answer your points okay so see then bonds bonds first of all equity and liability then non current liability because it is for long term then you have to remember that it is for long term borrowings then goodwill so goodwill is asset side main heading then non current asset in that also which so fixed asset in that also it will be coming under the heading of intangible asset bank overdraft so bank overdraft first of all liabilities then it is current liabilities then it is short term borrowings okay then bills receivable so bills receivable will go to asset side then in current assets and then in trade receivables equity share capital so it is your liability equity and liability then shareholder fund and then it will be under the heading of share capital copyright so copyright is your asset then non current asset and then fixed asset in intangible debenture discount see what they have told you during next year okay so see as there is during word okay first of all debenture discount will come on asset side now during word is there so current asset and in that also other current asset okay that is last point number 20 if you remember okay for during word you have to remember 20 number point for after i told you remember 14 number point okay like this call in advance it will be recorded in equity and liability current liability other current liabilities fine cash so it will be going asset side cash is your current asset and then cash and cash equivalent provident fund liability non current liability and long term liabilities again debentures liability non current liability and long term borrowings trademarks asset non current asset fixed asset that is intangible fine loose tools so asset then current assets and loose tools are going in inventory loan payable during next year see as it is payable it means it is liability okay and next year so current liability and other current liability bills payable so equity and liability current liability and it will be coming under the heading of that is trade payables general reserve so equity and liability shareholder fund and reserves and surplus so in short you have to go thoroughly with that format only then public deposit see i told you public deposit is one type of loan okay so equity and liability non current liability and long term borrowings debtors asset current assets trade receivable patent assets non current assets fixed asset that is intangible call in arrears i told you you have to deduct it from share capital okay so equity and liability shareholder fund and deduct it from share capital debenture redemption fund investment see it is investment okay so it will be long term investment because debentures are always for more than a year so asset non current investment and no, sorry non current assets and then non current investment stores and loose tools again it is asset asset current asset inventory see license i told you it is intangible asset license franchise and software okay three more intangible assets so asset non current asset fixed asset in that intangible asset closing stock any type of stock is inventory that is stock so assets current assets inventory bank balance so assets current assets cash and cash equivalent surplus as per statement of profit and loss so equity and liability shareholder fund and then reserves and surplus okay 
then deposit in electricity company okay so in electricity company deposit so that is your pub, uh, advances okay so assets non current assets long term loan and advances premium on redemption of preference share okay so equity and liability non current liability and other long term liability in which there were only two premiums okay so premium on redemption of preference share it will be going to other long term liabilities hope this items are all clear in your mind that under which head it will be going now see next is question number 4 will this we will cover in the next video same with 6 also will be covering in the next video come to point uh, question number 7 under which head will you show the following balances in statement of pnl in as per schedule 3 of companies act 2013 see that items were off balance sheet now this items are off statement of pnl okay so this we have to see again come back to page number 293 for question number 7 okay back side of your textbook see sales sales where it is going so revenue from operation okay salary where it is going employees benefit expense depreciation where it will go so depreciation and amortization okay debenture interest see interest see this is receipt so it is your income okay so it will be going to other income see do not see interest and directly go to finance cost okay here they have written that it is receipt it means you are receiving this this is your income so it will be other income see here it is paid so here interest this is your expense so it will be going to finance cost clear audit fee other expenses sell of scrap that is your income profit on asset so that is also your income advertisement expense so it is expense contribution to provident fund see company will also contribute in the provident fund of the employee so it is treated as employees benefit expense interest on bank overdraft see you are paying this interest so it will be finance cost okay because it will be expense bank charges so other expenses goodwill see goodwill is not shown in pnl okay so this is not to be shown here it will be shown under the heading of asset in non current asset that also in uh fixed asset and that also in intangible asset okay like that bonus to employees so employees benefit expense debenture discount return off see any kind of return off it will go to depreciation and amortization expense clear so this is the items in pnl account how to show under which heading okay now this rest of the sum that is question number 8 9 and 10 okay so this questions we are going to uh, complete in our next video okay so in the next video this lesson will be over hope whatever we have discussed today are clear in your mind if still you have any query then please ask